Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is not an old style Instagram logo, it's Fujifilm's latest instant camera, the Instax SQ6. The SQ6 is Fujifilm's second instant camera to use its recent Instax Square format. The first model, of course, being last year's SQ10, which launched the format. But there's one big difference. The SQ10 was a digital camera with internal memory and a screen. The SQ6, though, is a funny analog camera, like the Instax Mini lines. There is no internal memory in this. There is no screen at all. Now, the Instax Square format produces prints which measure about 2.4 inches by 2.4 or 62 by 62 millimeters. That's the same height as the Instax Mini format, but it's obviously wider. It's reminiscent of the classic Polaroid format, although smaller. I really like the shape and the size of these prints. There's something really attractive about them. Now, the camera itself costs about $130 or about 125 pounds. And like the Instax Mini, the film comes in packs of 10. Each cartridge has got 10 prints. At the time we filmed one of these videos, it worked out about $1.20 or about a pound a shot for one of these. But this is still a recent format, so hopefully that may go down over time. Now, loading this camera is very, very simple. Just open up this square packet. Make sure you find somewhere fairly subdued to do it. For example, underneath a pier while it's raining outside. Open up this silver foil packet. Make sure you throw it away somewhere responsibly, kids. And this is what the cartridge looks like. Pay attention to this yellow marker in the corner because that is what we're gonna line it up with inside the camera. So, we just open up this door here and you'll see this really is a very, very simple camera. There's no, it's just a lens and nothing else. There's no electronics inside here, at least in terms of the actual exposing of the film. And there's our yellow marker on the cartridge and it just slots in like so close it switch the camera on and then press the shutter release to take a picture now don't worry this first picture is not a real one it's actually just the header for the cartridge you can get rid of that you don't need this bit anymore Size-wise, the SQ6 is actually roughly similar to the uh, Mini 9 that preceded it. It's about the same height, same thickness. It's just a little bit wider to accommodate the wider prints which come out of this slot at the top. Now, like the Instax Mini format, there's no screen on the back, no internal memory. All composition is done with this optical viewfinder here. There's a built-in flash. And the batteries fit in here. Now, in one difference between this and the Mini 9, the SQ6 uses a pair of CR2 batteries. That should be good for about 300 pictures. That's the difference between it and the Mini 9, which used a pair of AA batteries. That was good for about 100 shots. So you should, on this model, get about 30 films out of it. 30 films with, of course, 10 frames in each one. Now, just a quick mention on those price differences. The SQ6, at about $130, £125, is roughly half the price of the all-digital SQ10, but it is roughly double the price of the Mini 9. But as you'll discover, it's actually a much more sophisticated camera. From the front, you'll see the SQ6 still has the good old Instax selfie mirror there. You may see myself and my mate Ben there in the reflection. Thanks for recording this, Ben. He's a very friendly, helpful guy. However, in that first degree of additional sophistication I alluded to earlier, there is a power switch on the top. No longer the great big physical push of a button on the Instax mini products that literally pushed the lens out. Now it's motorized, a lot more like a compact digital camera. And look at that, the lens extends with the motor and the lens cover gets out of the way there. Now, if you are familiar with the Instax Mini format, you may remember that it actually had a manual aperture control around the lens here. And what would happen is the camera would attempt to meter the scene and give you a recommendation on what it thought you should manually turn that lens ring to. It would say, hey, it's pretty bright. You need to turn it to the pretty bright setting. Clear off, bird. Brighton seagulls are pecking at my Instax square pictures and at a pound a throw, they're not getting any of them. I will move on, the professional that I am. Now, one of the big differences with the SQ6 and the earlier mini formats is that the exposure now is fully automatic within the camera itself. Clear off, bird. This is, this is what we're up against here. <laughs> 
We're trying to find some shelter because it's raining outside and these birds are, um, well, they're asserting their uh, authority over the shoe. Our assistant DP's here. <laughs> right, should we continue yeah. <laughs> with the tour of the SQ6? Okay, so... I was talking about the exposure, which previously on the Instax Mini format you had to set on the barrel via a recommendation from the camera itself. Now on the SQ6 it can set that exposure automatically, but more importantly it also has a broader range of shutter speeds at its disposal. In fact any range at all, because the Instax Mini format was locked at a 60th of a second. Now the Instax SQ6 can vary its shutter speed on a much greater range and it will set the aperture for you electronically. Now look at these interesting icons on the back because this is how you actually tell the camera what kind of picture you're going to take. Notice the mode button here. So as I press this, watch what happens to these lights and also watch what happens to the lens at the front. So the first one is A, of course fully automatic. Next to that is a little icon that looks like, yes, it's somebody taking a selfie. Now watch what happens to the lens when I press it. That's right, you saw it actually extend. Now, the next icon along there is a macro one. No difference on the lens there. Press it once more though, and that is the universal symbol for infinity. It is a mountain, and if I press it, notice the lens change again. Now, there are in fact three different focusing ranges on the SQ6, and this is one of the major benefits it has over the old Instax Mini format, which really just locked its focus, and if you wanted to focus at anything closer, you had to attach something to the front. That's no longer the case with this model. It can actually electronically adjust the focus range here. Just three ranges, though. It's not an autofocus camera. The next icon here is for a double exposure. Take one picture, then take another one, and it will superimpose them together. Now, if you do want some extra degree of exposure control, we have L for light, of course, D for dark. This shot was filmed with the normal exposure, and I thought, you know, it might come a bit too light, but when I press the D button for darker, this is what I got. And then press it once again, and it cycles back to A. There are two other buttons here as well. There is a self-timer button that's also new to the SQ6 over the Instax Mini format. It's a 10 second self-timer. And below that, a flash suppression button. Yes, on the older Instax Mini format, the flash fired every single time, whether you liked it or not. You could, of course, hold your finger in front of it. Well, on the Instax SQ6, you can turn it off by pressing this button. And like the other Instax analog cameras, you've got a counter here in the corner which shows you how many pictures you've got left. I've got 10 pictures left on this roll because I haven't taken one yet. These instant cameras are very popular for taking pictures of people and of course you can take selfies with it. I mentioned this little selfie mirror on the front. Now it looks really naff and if you've not used one of these before you think really I've got to look at a mirror on the camera but actually it works really well and it also takes care or rather takes into consideration some of the parallax you get when you're shooting at close range. So I've switched the camera on and I'm going to put it on selfie mode. And I'm going to hold the camera up. And I've just positioned myself right in the middle of the mirror here. The flash went off and the picture is coming out the back here. Now the exposure time is the same as, or rather the development time is the same as earlier models. By the way, there's no need to do this anymore. In fact, I'm not entirely sure whether you ever needed to do that. By the way, if you're ever wondering what this larger area underneath instant prints is for, that's actually what contains the development fluids. So as it comes out of the camera, it squeezes it over the image that you've just taken and uh, it helps develop it. So while I continue having a little chat, I will show you this so you can actually watch it developing in real time. Hopefully it's a beautiful picture of yours truly. Now speaking of exposure, one of the big problems I had with the earlier Instax Mini format was that it was very easy to find yourself in an overexposed situation, especially when shooting outdoors, even on an overcast day like today, let alone a bright sunny one. That combination of a relatively so slow 60th of a second shutter speed and film that had a sensitivity of 800 ISO meant that even when the aperture was fully closed, you could still end up with an overexposed shot. 
But now with the SQ6, its ability to access some faster shutter speeds really makes it a lot more practical when you're shooting outdoors. I've been taking pictures with this in Brighton on sunnier days than we have today and they've been exposed perfectly. I've not even had to necessarily press the D button on the back to darken the picture. You can see as I'm talking this picture of me slowly appearing. Also, the ability to select those three different focusing ranges, don't underestimate how useful that is. You, because you can t tell this camera to focus towards infinity when you're shooting landscapes, to shoot at more of a kind of mid-range, which is like the, uh, not the selfie range, but more when you're taking pictures of friends, and then the macro distance, which you would use on the selfie mode, or when taking close-ups of, well, anything you want. Now I should say that the optical viewfinder here is not in any way linked to the lens. So as the lens is focusing on different distances, the viewfinder is not doing anything to compensate for that. Now when you're framing your shots with this viewfinder and the subject's far away, you shouldn't have any problems. But as you get closer and closer to your subject, you will find it getting shifted towards the corner. Here are a couple of pictures that I took with the Instax SQ6 of one of my favourite cups of coffee and believe it or not, in both of these pictures I positioned the coffee right in the middle of the frame and on both of them you can see it's really shifted up to the corner. I still think they look quite nice and that's one of the beauty of Insta uh, instant cameras is that it's fun that the pictures are not necessarily completely sharp or completely as you expected them. There's that element of surprise but if you are more after a precision result in a macro environment, you should get used to the viewfinder and positioning your subjects in a slightly different way. So there we go, I've almost reached full saturation there on the print. If I left that a little bit longer, it would get a little bit darker. The SQ6 may no longer need a macro attachment to stick on the front, but that's not to say it doesn't come with some accessories you can stick on it. There are actually now three coloured filters that you can put over the flash for special effects. Here's red green and purpley pink and of course that produces coloured light when the flash goes off and that can give your pictures special effects. When it comes to digital cameras, I'm all for the highest resolutions, the sharpest lenses, the greatest control. But that's not to say that there isn't room in my life for an instant camera. In fact, I think there's room in almost every photographer's life for an instant camera. And I've absolutely loved shooting with Fujifilm's established and very popular Instax Mini format. There's something not just about the immediacy of the format, but the fact that it's ephemeral. You know, you're capturing a moment that's not being repeated. And I felt that when the Instax Square format came out, the SQ10 lost some of that charm. Sure, it had the flexibility of being digital. It had memory, which allowed you, you to record those pictures, actually print them out with another device, email them, print out as many copies as you wanted, or not print them out at all. But that kind of turned it more into the style of photography you do with digital. Take the picture, if it's not right, do it again, adjust it, maybe not bother. With an instant analog camera, you're absolutely committed. Every time you push that button, a print is gonna come out the top. So that makes it fun, it makes it a surprise, and it makes those prints unique. Well, the SQ6 gives you that charm, the immediacy and the ephemeral nature of the mini format, but in that nice, wider, square format, which personally, I'm a really, really big fan of. Now, of course, at roughly a pound or a dollar a print, you've got to be a bit careful with how many pictures you are going to be taking with it, but hopefully the prices will come down. But for me, it's the camera that is so much more flexible than the Instax Mini before it that makes it truly compelling. As I explained earlier, the fact that you've got those three different focusing ranges and the ability to deploy a much greater range of exposures makes it much more practical whether you're shooting in the usual dim interiors of your friends at a party or whether you're shooting outdoors when you're on holiday. This camera will capture it all and it will do it in that attractive square format. As always, if you enjoy this video, Please subscribe, like, share it with your friends. If you really like it, you can buy me a coffee. You can find out how to do this in the comments below. And as always, if you want way more detail on any camera or lens that you can think of, head on over to cameralabs.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. I'll see you next time. Goodbye from rainy and seagull-filled Brighton. See you.